This is Tom Dupuy with Online Media Masters. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Yoast Page Analysis tab to optimize your content for green lights. So this is obviously the Yoast plugin, and once you install it, um, you can configure the settings. I wrote a tutorial on the Yoast settings. If you want to Google it, I'm in the, on the first page, Online Media Masters. But uh, once you configure everything, then you're going to want to scroll down when you're editing a page or post and you're going to see this um, SEO box right here. So basically the first step is to choose a focus keyword and this is where keyword research comes into play. <laughs> um, there's a lot of different strategies for this but the main one I use is Google Autocomplete. So when you go to google.com Let's say we're targeting um, some type of MacBook Pro, or we'll just do it for this site. We'll just do um, SEO-friendly WordPress themes. So if I search, that's my previous search history, so we can just delete that. If I search SEO-friendly um, Word and just put the W in there, I can see that it shows up first. Um, so that's a really good sign, and even just SEO friendly, uh, that's a pretty common term. So SEO friendly WordPress themes being third in the list is a good indicator that's being searched a lot. Um, so as far as keyword research goes, there's different strategies for learning which keyword is the best, um, how to target phrases that are being searched, but they're not being searched too much so that they're too competitive to rank for. For instance, instead of targeting how to get out of debt, which uh, I can assume is a very competitive keyword. I mean, if I Google this, there's the extended listings which indicate higher competition, um, credit.com is a large website, time.com, even Wikipedia shows up there. Life Hacker, and these are all really authoritative websites. So we always want to go a long tail. So instead of competing for that really competitive phrase, we would select a, a more specific phrase like how to get out of debt with bad credit or with no money. And that's just one um, technique to select your focus keywords. But it, also if you Google Yoast focus keywords, I wrote an article on that if you want more information. I think I'm the second result under Yoast for that. So th after you select your focus keyword, <laughs> then you want to set it right here, and you and then you'll need to um, save as as a draft to get the page analysis tab. <clears throat> so I already published this, so I don't have it. But if I didn't, I would just click save to draft. And then I would um, scroll down, and then you can see there's this main box, but there's also the page analysis tab. And I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. There's the page analysis tab right here. So the question is, what do I do? Um, there's all these recommendations. Some of them are helpful. Some of them I feel like they're not as important. So I'll just go through each one and uh, you know explain it a little bit. But the first step is to basically choose a page title or a post title for your keyword. So instead of just having you know SEO friendly WordPress themes as the page or as the post title, I wrote a more descriptive. Um, enticing title you could say 25 plus SEO friendly WordPress themes for everyone so it still includes the keyword right there which is good and it reads well um, th that's the most important so you want to include um, your keyword here but you also want it to read well so that goes for the um, the page title up here and then the SEO title down here, right here. So the next step is to write a meta description. And I found that um, the main 
The main reason for this is to entice people to click on your link. So this is the search engine snippet shows up. Here's our SEO title. Here's our URL, and then here's our meta description. So the meta description is really used to entice people to click on your website or on that link. So you want to summarize your content and just provide a nice summary of what your content is about so people know what they're clicking on. And you can also see that uh, <coughs> Yoast recommends not going over the character limit, but you want to write it. So it's probably at least 140 characters, but if you go short, I've even gone about 15 characters short before, and as long as it accurately describes your content, then you should be fine. And you also want to include the URL, or the keyword in the URL. So WordPress will automatically use the page title as the URL, but uh, I sh it's a matter of preference, but I just shortened it to include the exact keyword without the 25 or the for everyone part. So this is really just preference. I could have just left it and it would have included my keyword fine, but this is a shorter, kind of prettier permalink, you could say. All right, and the next step, um, uh, I also want to mention that Yoast is only going to detect exact keyword matches. So even though I have um, SEO friendly WordPress themes, so you can see that this doesn't have a hyphen and this does. So just because of that small little change, it says I'm not using the keyword in the meta description. So if you're using a plural right here, but you don't use a plural over here, and there's a small change in your keyword, don't worry about if Yo says you're not using it there because it only detects exact keyword matches. As long as you have the gist of the keyword in there, then you should be fine. So the main thing you want to look at is the page analysis tab. Um, I would go through this after you've written your content because you don't really want to um, you know, worry about your SEO as much <clears throat> as you want to worry about just creating good useful content because that is SEO. Um, but after you're done, then you could look at this and <clears throat> look at like the keyword density. Um, there's not really a perfect keyword density. The, the, my general rule is about two to three times in the content, um, but you do want to make sure you include it in the first couple sentences. Uh, flush reading score, I pay no attention to. The page title contains a keyword, but it does not appear at the beginning. Um, like I mentioned, it's important that your page title flows well rather than just including it at the beginning and you know making it just read SEO friendly WordPress themes. So um, that's fine. The keyword phrase appears in the URL. Yes, it does. It appears in one out of 28 subheadings in the copy. So basically, this is um, this is the the H1 is your page title and the subheadings. Um, you can include your keyword here, but like I have it right here. So it may help, but like Yoast says, it's not a major ranking factor. If it reads well, then do it. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. This page has 44 outbound links. So as far as links goes, there's two ways to use links in your content. There's internal links and there's external links. Internal links are where you link to a page or post on your website. External links are where you link to an external uh, web page. <clears throat> so since I have, um, since I list 25 WordPress themes, I'm already going to have 25 links off the bat. So it's really, um, the general rule for this is just to provide resources. Um, so if, if I mention something about Yoast, I might, in, I might uh, link to the Yoast settings or just learn what people 
Um, if, if people want more information on something, provide a resource, whether that's your own content or an external web page. So the images on this page contain alt tags. Basically, when I uploaded this graphic right here, this is a, a post graphic I use for all my for all my articles. So before I uploaded the graphic, I named the file name uh, SEO friendly WordPress themes. And then if you name the file name with the keyword, it will automatically uh, set the alt tag to that um, to that phrase. So if I edit this, I can also manually adjust the alternative text to include whatever um, keyword I want. But a general rule is to only include the keyword if it actually de accurately describes the image. All right, so we've never used this focus keyword before. You don't want to target the same keyword on multiple pages because it's redundant and you're better off um, targeting a keyword on one page and just doing a really good job of targeting that keyword and creating good content, getting links to the page, getting social shares, and doing all those, uh, getting all those nice signals that search engines look for, rather than creating, you know, three pieces of mediocre content. Hope hope you rank for it because you're better off just creating one piece of strong content. So in the specified meta description, how does it compare to the competition? Um, like I said, just make your meta description enticing to click on and summarize your content, and you should be fine there. There are 2,303 words containing the body copy. So generally, the, it's a 300-word minimum, and going anything below that, you're not providing any really um, good, thorough content, you could say. <clears throat> so just make sure that your content does a good job and... Um, outlining everything that your visitors want to know. And then you shouldn't even have to worry about the, the uh, word recommendation. The page title is more than 40 characters and less than the recommended 70. <laughs> so like I said, a, a short, too short of a page title isn't good, but you also don't want to go over that 70 character limit. The keyword appears in the first paragraph of the copy, like I mentioned before. Uh, use your keyword about two to three times in the body copy and once in the um, first paragraph or first couple sentences. <clears throat> so once you have these green lights, don't worry about if they're all green. Like I, you know, like you see here, some of these aren't green, and I really don't have to worry about about it that much. I know I have really good content here. Um, I've done a ton of research on this, and uh, I think I rank number one or two for it. Yeah, there I am. Or number two, because um, this is show all results. This is basically non-personalized results. So there I am at number two, and I don't have all my green lights. <laughs> So that's the gist of the on-page SEO. Um, you, you can also see the social tabs and advanced tabs. I really don't use these, but um, as long as you configure the Yoast settings, all right, I did for this one, but they're there if you want to use them. And uh, I just want to end on one note. <clears throat> I can't stress how important it is to select a good focus keyword and um, research these phrases. So I actually just wrote an article on my site about uh, learning these keywords and creating a keyword list. So if you're looking to just do all the research and get this out of the way, then um, this article shows you how to create an extensive keyword list so you don't have to research your focus keywords all the time. It, shows you if you're targeting basically small towns what to do, large cities what to do, or if you're going for more national based keywords, then this is the strategy for that. And I also listed it on <clears throat> how to research the keyword competition. So like I said, how to get out of debt is going to be a competitive keyword, 
and I went over some of these indicators but uh, this just goes into more detail about selecting keywords. Here you can find competitor keywords. Um, yeah, and this post should really help. So this is the URL right here if you want to take a look at it. But uh, other than that, <laughs> I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. Thank you.